Hello everybody, I bet that some people are looking forward to this video. I realize that it has been about two years since my last laptop collection update. I believe we should start off the collection with something I recently acquired that you may find quite interesting. One thing you will notice as I go through this collection is that some things have changed. And I did get rid of some laptops. I did get some more laptops and things kind of shifted around. Without further ado, we will take a look at the first one. And then after we look at all of them, I'm going to go back and power them on and talk a little bit about them. So this will be a long video. So hold on to your hats and prepare for the first one. This is a Toshiba Satellite Pro. It is a Pentium based one. And an interesting feature about this one is that I'll kind of adjust the screen is that it actually has a working battery, which is not charged. So I'm gonna go and charge it later. But yeah, I, I picked this up for $1.95. It has an active matrix display. Oh, the uh, model number is Toshiba. 465 CDX. I picked this up for $1.95. The person that was um, selling it didn't exactly know what they had. They're just like, it's an old laptop. Do you want to buy it? Yes, no. I was like, sure. And they went, well, how, how does $2 sound? And I was like, okay, that sounds great. So then I bought it. I always kind of wanted a nice DOS. MS-DOS machine. And I've always found Toshiba to be, you know, they make good uh, laptops. Oh, should probably go over the ports. Um, it's only missing one of its flaps, which is pretty interesting. I mean, most of them are broken off. Around on the back, we have our VGA out, our serial printer, and over here, we have a proprietary docking connector. We have our communications port, COM port, you know, serial port, our PS2 mouse keyboard connector, and our video and our power port. There's also a USB 1.0 port here and an IR receiver. Going around to this side, we have our external phone modem port, a phone jack built in, our optical drive, and our PCM CIA expansion ports. There was a dust cover here, but someone removed it, probably for easy access. And then we have our Kensington lock on the side here, and then around the front. We have our audio ports. We have our speaker, microphone, and line in. Our adjustable volume. And our latch. Our hard drive, battery, Hard drive activity and charging activity lights. Um, pretty sure this is where the hard drive is. And autofocus is disabled. And then on this side, we have our power button, which is sheathed. There's a little locking slide. And then you have another proprietary expansion port that I don't know what it does.
then. Our next one is our win book. This guy, um, he's, he's had some issues lately. I don't know if I mentioned this, but he kind of had a little bit of a fall. It kind of cracked here. I had to glue it back together. Um, I realized that the USB port was actually broken. So I unsoldered and added a new USB port, the right one. Well, looking at it from this angle, the right side one. And we all know the ports on the back. USB, mic, audio, serial, parallel printer, video, fan vent. And then Ethernet and phone jack. Our DVD CD rewritable. Our floppy disk. And a PCM CIA port. Here is our little, um, again, got this for $2, our Dell laptop. This one is a model D400. Dell 304, i.e. Ryan Garrett. Would know, know more about this one. I'm not really a Dell guy. Um, on this side, we have... Some sort of port, I think it's an eSATA port, USB port, our Firewire, our headphone and mic, IR blaster, our PCM CIA slot, um, hard drive holder. There is no optical drive on this one because it's so slim. The battery unfortunately is dead and it is missing the little mouse nub. Oh, ah, here is our big Sony Vio. Absolutely massive laptop. Our wireless on off switch. Headphone, mic, two USB, 2.0. Um, SD card, Sony M Pro, whatever, memory stick. Our VGA Firewire. Um, Ethernet and modem. Our power jack. And our optical drive, I think it's a DVD. And our Kensington. I'm still surprised that this guy Retailed for, I think it was like 2300 Oh, here's our memory card slots. So SD and M Pro. Then I don't know what this is. Is this like a mini MCI, PCI MCIA port? Probably. And that ends that first stack. This is sort of a pride possession. This is my Dell Latitude CPX, model specifically CP, oh, PPX, so it's CPPX, I think. Where'd it go? There. What makes this one so special to me is that it is in immaculate condition, except there's some screen scuffing that Unfortunately, has happened. Um, can't really fix that. But it's running a Pentium 3. It was made for Windows 95 and 98. Or, sorry, Windows 98 and Windows NT. It has a CD rewritable. A CD won't focus. There we go. CD rewritable DVD ROM drive. We have our single speaker, our mic, headphone, line, and S-Video out, our vent and Kensington lock on the back. We have our other fan, our VGA, serial parallel, proprietary docking connector, one USB 1.0, 1 
our PS2 keyboard mouse connector and our serial port, and our ever so lovely proprietary battery connector, our ever so lovely proprietary AC connector, and an IR receiver. On this side, we have our PCM CIA ports populated with a DVD decoder and a golden modem card. I'll get out the DVD card. It's a DVD MPEG decoder card. So I should just drop back inside there. And then after that, we have our hard drive bay and then our other speaker. This guy came with some extra stuff that I was able to dig up. I was able to purchase off of eBay a three and a quarter inch floppy drive, which can be inserted into the expansion bay. If I can figure out how to unlock it. There we go. So you remove whatever goes in there, and you can either optionally put a secondary battery or one of these expansions. So you can put your floppy drive in there, and now you have a floppy drive. Or if you can or if you want, you can switch it out. Put in the DVD ROM drive. Now, unfortunately, where the battery was, and the battery is dead, I just turned the battery into a blanking plate. It's empty. There's nothing in it. You could, I mean, you could hide your drugs in it. <clears throat> and unfortunately, the battery bay is not deep enough to fit any of the expansions. So, what do you do? if you want to use both of them. Well, I'm glad you asked. You go and you take your virtually unobtainium, because it's Dell proprietary, even though it's a serial port. You take your parallel serial port, your proprietary docking connector, and this guy here, And you connect one side to your printer parallel port. And then you take the other side, you connect it to your onboard IO expansion. And then you can use your floppy drive. So then you connect your parallel printer port cable to the proprietary docking connector. And now you're able to use whatever external device you've chosen to use. For this example, we're using the floppy disk drive. If we want to do it the other way, you just like this, flip it around, making sure not to bend the connector cable, eject the drive, okay, let's just remove that one, eject the drive, insert whatever expansion you want to use with this device, and get this undone. These locks are really difficult to get, especially with the DVD one. So 
So remove the DVD drive in this case. And put in the floppy drive. Plug in the cable. And then plug in the other side into your optional expansion, external expansion. And now you can have an external optical drive. Or if you want to get fancy, <clears throat> have two floppy drives. So when I had gotten this laptop, I thought that I did not have a floppy drive because it only came with the optical drive. So I went on eBay and bought this one untested and it arrived. After I got it, you know, testing it, etc., I go and look in my box of spares and I find that I have this exact floppy drive available. I apparently had a laptop similar to this, or a family member did, and I just took the spare parts. So now I have two floppy drives for this very same laptop. So we can unplug those. And then actually, the same lap, the same thrift shop that I got this laptop from, two days after getting the laptop, I was digging through the cable bin, and I found the original OEM power supply. So clearly, whoever donated this laptop also donated it with the charger, but they got separated at some point. And this is running Windows 98, if you are wondering. Up next, we have a rather battered Toshiba. I honestly do not remember what operating system this one's running. I think it's either Windows XP or Windows 7. So, this uh, has a Celeron or a Celery, Celeron M. Supposedly has Windows XP. This was one of the laptops that I got in the last batch, so you probably have seen this one before. Again, this guy got it for a dollar. Dead battery. It is a Lenovo, uh, sorry, what am I saying, Lenovo? No, it's a Toshiba. It's a Toshiba Satellite L25. And then our last laptop we're going to look at today would be a Sony Vio, an older one, from about 2001, I think. Yeah, either 99 or 2001. Actually, if it has Windows XP, it's 2001. This is a Sony Vio PCG 97 3L. This actually can run Windows 98 with the exception of the sound chip. There's no sound support on Windows 98 for this laptop. And I just remembered, I forgot to do the ports on the other laptop. Here's the Toshiba. We have a DVD CD-ROM, DVD Rebut. We have a CD rewritable and DVD-ROM drive, our Kensington lock. Around the back, we, it's very sparse. We have our S-Video, our power, our USB, modem, and ethernet. We have our VGA, a vent, 
to USB 2.0, microphone, headphone, PCMCIA expansion. Around the front, we have where the Wi Fi button would have been. And then two mono speakers one here, one here. On this laptop, we have our video out, our mic in, headphone out, our Firewire, two PCM, two PCM CIA expansion slots, where our battery would have gone if it still had a battery. Nothing on the front. Our floppy drive, three and a quarter, and our DVD ROM, CD rewritable optical drive. Around the back, we have our modem, USB 1.0. Behind this door, we have serial, printer, monitor, and Ethernet, and one more lonely USB and power.